This morning, friends and family gathered at Congregation Micah in Brentwood to remember Mark Howard. Mark was a sports anchor here at News Channel 5 for nearly two decades before becoming a fixture on local sports radio for two decades more. News Channel 5's Chris Davis helps us remember our friend and former colleague. I must have had two boxes of cassette tapes. In the world of TV news, to land a job, you have to stand out. I got so tired of looking at tape after tape after tape, and then all of a sudden, I put Mark Howard's tape in there and it just lit up. I said, I think we have found our man. And so began a nearly 20 year run for Mark Howard at News Channel 5. One thing bothers me though, don't these guys look a little mature to be in high school? He truly covered all the bases. What kind of pitch were you looking for? Well, I was looking for something close to the sun. He stood in all temperatures. The feeling on this team is it'd be a nice time to mix in a win. From high perches, where I have the best seat in the house for Laverne against neighboring Riverdale, to high octane press conferences, sparring weekly with Tennessee football coach Johnny Majors. And coach Majors' face would turn all red. <laughs> And we would just have to put our hands over our mouth and laugh. Well, Mark wasn't going to, he, he wasn't doing it to necessarily be tough. He was doing it because he's Mark. He was also doing it because he could leave. <laughs> but where Mark seemed to truly shine was injecting humor into every sports cast. To boost Murray's Heisman candidacy, he needs a hook, a slogan. How about... Don't be a peon, vote for Leon. <laughs> that sounds good. To me. He could write humor into his stuff. You know, there was there was a smart aleck in him. Like putting together a tongue-in-cheek story about how NASCAR fans must assume he writes his scripts. There is Buckshot Jones, who rides in eighth position. Oh, yeah. A little chilly in here. Scoring on Buckshot. <laughs> This is for you, babe. Don't take that. They can't do that to him. It's an outrage. I'm going to put that in my story. There's a conspiracy to get Buckshot Jones. Only Mark could take a mundane Titans practice and turn it into appointment television. The biggest question remains, when will rookie guard Zach Piller get rid of that tuft of hair that reminds some of movie pig babe? He was just so much fun. Mark could even laugh at himself, like when he and almost everyone else rode off the Titans' last second chances against the Bills in the playoffs. 20 seconds to go, and Steve Christie lining up a 40-yard field goal for the game. Of course, I didn't take into account the Music City miracle and listen as I stay as cool and composed as a 10-year-old girl at a Britney Spears concert. Go! He's got a lane! Unbelievable! He's got a score! Unbelievable! In the early 2000s, Mark left News Channel 5, but not the world of sports. He joined Frank Wycheck and Kevin Ingram, launching the Wake Up Zone on 104.5 The Zone. That's where I thought he could really show off his knowledge and uh, how much he just knew about sports. It, it was unbelievable. It's almost like he knew too much stuff at, at some of the time. My God, he was a walking encyclopedia. He knew more about sports than any person I've ever met in my life, and I'm not sure it's really close. And what Mark didn't know off the top of his head. He would, uh, you know, go through a ream of paper in a, in a week of the show, I think, probably. He seemed to always carry with him. I see these reams of paper, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Sports radio gave Mark the chance to air his opinion, and did he ever? He could be pretty gruff on the air, there's no doubt about it. You know, we, we joked about him cutting off collars, and I, and I think as we, as we progressed as a show, he got a little more patient with people, but especially early on, <laughs> there was not a lot of suffering fools. If he, if he had a collar that he didn't care for, man, he, he was, it was right into him. And uh, I think a caller one time called him Marcus interrupt us. I, I thought that was hilarious. Brash, outspoken, and if, if it, you know, I don't want to say hurt your feelings, but there was a little bit of that. He didn't really care. He was just saying what was on his mind, and often it was thought-provoking and certainly discussion-creating, and that was good. But it wasn't all serious. Paul Kaharski's favorite moment with Mark had nothing to do with the game. He was boasting about his walking walking come on and he told Frank I will walk you into the ground so I immediately was like all right we have to set up a walk-off 
Mark in no time pulls either his calf or his hamstring. Frank is just la di da, just walking like a normal guy, the lapping Mark, the whole time. I mean, it is hysterical. And because Mark enjoyed having the last word, it seems only fitting to continue that tradition here for a sports reporter who didn't just stand out in Nashville media, he changed it for the better. I hope you'll remember me as a fearless reporter ow, 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 ow. who always knew his place. Hope's number one, I'm number two. With photojournalist Brian McKeegan, Chris Davis, News Channel 5. Thank you, Chris. Great job. Mark was 65 years old. He's survived by his children, Jack, Rocco, Lauren and Kayla, and his wife, Deborah. Our condolences to them. Our paths crossed just for a few months when yeah. I began here at News Channel 5. Loved working with him, his enthusiasm, and I was a fan since day one. I mean, what, what incredible accomplishments. I know. He witnessed so much. I love it. I love it.